Hey guys, welcome back to the channel uh, and to my kitchen where I'm currently kneeling on the floor because today we are going to do a splinting video that has been highly requested. Um, so I, I put out a poll on Instagram um, and asked what kind of videos you guys wanted to see and a very popular answer that I got was relative motion orthotics or yoke splints. So I live alone, um, so we are going to do the best that we can with this um, and... I think it will be hopefully really helpful. So I have my um, material here that I'm gonna be using. This is something that I uh, like to use a lot in the clinic for relative motion splints, but you can also use thermoplastic as well. And um, yeah, let's get started. I'm going to post kind of the links for something that I find really helpful anytime I'm going to make relative motion orthotic. It's the, the brace lab. Um, photos of kind of the the alignment that you want depending on what finger you need to splint and if it needs to be in flexion or extension so i always review that before i'm making the splint if i forget um so yeah i think that's really helpful and i will post the description below so let's get going I've never tried to do splinting at home before, so hopefully this goes okay. And if it doesn't, you won't see it because I will not post it. <laughs> so fun. So I'm just getting kind of my station set up here. I'm gonna have a towel so that I can dry the material off a little bit. And I think the thing with relative motion orthotics or yoke splints is that there's a lot of different positions depending on the different finger that you're trying to splint. So I think what I'll show here um, is a kind of a middle finger into extension splint because that's something that I made recently. Um, I had a, a patient that had a sagittal band rupture of the middle finger and so we just needed to splint the MP in 15 to 20 degrees more extension than the other digits. Um, for several weeks. So I'm going to show how you would do that. And if you guys have any requests for like what specific type of, um, or what finger you need or, uh, anything like that, just let, let me know in the comments below and I will try to, um, film some more videos like this. Yeah. This is just like a scrap piece that I had sent to me after I passed the CHT exam from, um, this company that, uh, Orphicast, which is a really great material. So if you are ever in the need, this is not sponsored by them, but just a really great material that you can use. Let's do it. So I'm not flipping you off right now. I'm just kind of showing like the setup of that position. I'll usually kind of think about how I'm going to position the material and how I'm going to create the effect of extension. So I'll use a pencil or a finger or something just to mimic before I make the splint. And my material kind of got stuck to itself, so that's not a fabulous start. And then for this, I'm gonna create like a double fold. And hopefully you can see this okay. I know it's always a little tough to splint yourself. So I would initially get the position. I would make sure the PIPs are clear, make sure that the splint is pushed up close to the top of the MCP joint. And then I would hold them in that position until the material will dry. And for something like this, a lot of times what I'll do is actually add on another piece on top that um, kind of like a gutter. And I'll show you that too, like kind of how it will hold the finger and keep it a little bit more stable. Cause I do find that sometimes these patients are like a little bit nervous, um, understandably, cause 
it's painful when their finger will sublux, um, when the tendon sublux, subluxes or anything. So that can just give people like a little bit of like security or kind of stability. And I always splint it and making sure that the fingers are not fully abducted, but not fully adducted either. I want them to have a little bit of space so that when they go to make a fist, it's a natural kind of position for the hand. So that's what it's looking like right now. We've got good MCP position. It's about 15 or 20 degrees above the other fingers. And they can kind of flex and extend their uh, PAP joints and their DIP joints. So they're still going to be able to kind of have some gentle use of this hand, which makes it a little bit more functional for them. Um, and then let me show you kind of how it'll be a little different because I don't have a heat gun at home. But what I would do is kind of heat that part of the material as I add like kind of a little bridge piece. Um, so this is kind of what it, what it looks like right now. These are nice splints because the patient can just slide it on and off the fingers like that. And then let me just put that little, um, little scoop or that little tunnel piece gutter, like a little pipe for the finger to sit in. And you'll see kind of how that feels a little bit more stable for the patient. <laughs> I apologize for all of the time that you're gonna spend looking at my stomach and not at my face during this video because I didn't have a good way to set up uh, a camera at the level that I would be doing the splint. So you guys are the true MVPs of this video for tolerating this. <laughs> so I'm just creating like, again, like a little piece that I'm seaming together. And then I'm just gonna adhere it kind of to the top of the splint here and just try to kind of get a little seam going and then I'll slip it back on the patient me and I'll form like a little literally a little a little gutter around that that finger just to give it like a little bit of lateral stability um, it feels like a little pocket for them to kind of keep the keep the middle finger from deviating laterally side to side. So it gives them the sense of a little bit more stability so that it won't get bumped all the time or kind of shifted. Um, definitely something that you don't necessarily have to do, but I found that that's like a good little trick to use if you're feeling um, like the patient might need it or if the patient seems a little bit like kind of nervous or they've come back to you for an adjustment they told you they just don't feel like it's protected or something like that sometimes that's like a, a quick easy fix to give them a little bit more comfort and stability and not have you have to make a whole new splint so I use that trick sometimes pretty successfully so that's kind of what the uh, finished product looks like here I hope this uh, I hope this very awkward angled video is helpful for you guys. Um, and if it is, please leave a comment below. If it's not, please leave a comment below and I will try to figure out some different ways that I can maybe show you some splinting videos. Again, it's something that is requested very frequently and I will do my best um, because I, again, live alone. So it's hard to kind of splint yourself and I don't have a lot of splinting equipment at home. Um, but I will do my best. So <laughs> let me know if there's anything that you want to see. If you want to see kind of how I would make it for a different finger or for a different setup. But that is essentially what a relative motion orthotic looks like. Thank you guys so much for watching and I appreciate you all and um, I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>